In this video, we'll be looking at the nerve supply to the larynx, finding out where these nerves come from, where they go, and how they can be injured. We'll also meet one of the weirdest structures in the human body, and a favourite of evolutionary biologists everywhere. We're going to start with an anterior view of the larynx, which you can download from the links below. At the top is the hyoid bone, then the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, and the trachea hanging underneath. We also need to add some major arteries that are found in this region. First we have the aorta heading up from the heart, and looping over to the left to form the aortic arch. And as you draw this, make sure to leave some spaces along the top for the next stage of the drawing. Coming off the arch are the arteries that supply the head and upper limb. So on the left there are common carotid to the head, and a subclavian artery to the upper limb. We'll find both of these vessels on the right too, but instead of leaving the arch directly, they first form a common vessel known as the brachiocephalic trunk. This then splits into right common carotid and subclavian branches. Finally, we need to add the pulmonary trunk that delivers deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Although this originates from the right ventricle, it actually fits to the left of the aorta. After leaving the heart, it bifurcates, with a right pulmonary artery heading underneath the arch, and a left pulmonary artery passing in front of the descending aorta. During development, a connection known as the ductus arteriosus allows blood to move from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta. At birth, this vessel should close, but a remnant, known as the ligamentum arteriosum, remains. We're now ready to add some laryngeal nerves. Innovation to the larynx comes via branches of the vagus nerve. This nerve is found on both sides of the body, where it leaves the brainstem to supply organs in the chest and abdomen with parasympathetic innervation. The superior laryngeal nerve leaves the vagus and heads straight towards the larynx. It then splits into internal and external laryngeal nerves. The internal branch supplies sensation to the lining of the larynx, whilst the external branch innervates critothyroid, an intrinsic laryngeal muscle that helps to tense the vocal cords. Now, if you're thinking that the presence of a superior laryngeal nerve means we'll also have an inferior one, then you're spot on. As you might expect, this nerve leaves the vagus at a lower level than the superior branch, but then it does something weird. Instead of passing up to the larynx, these branches head inferiorly into the chest before looping back up into the neck. On the left, it passes under the aortic arch, just lateral to the ligamentum arteriosum, whilst on the right, it loops around the subclavian artery. But if these nerves head in one direction, then turn back on themselves, we describe them as being recurrent, and so these are the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerves. The recurrent laryngeals finish as inferior laryngeal nerves. These innervate the remaining intrinsic muscles and so are responsible for most movements of the vocal cords. We've now drawn the nerves that innervate the larynx, but it may have left you with a question. We've seen how those recurrent branches head into the chest, but why do they take this route? Surely there are easier ways to reach the larynx. Well, the answer to this lies with everyone's favourite pair of E-words, embryology and evolution. Now, if for some reason you're not a fan of either topic, then feel free to skip this chapter, and we can pretend I never mentioned them. But if you want to find out more, then join me for a delve into our developmental history. During our embryological development, precursor for the larynx and the arteries sit at roughly the same vertebral level. At this stage, both laryngeal nerves head straight to the larynx, passing in between the great vessels. However, as the body continues to grow, the vessels move inferiorly, heading down into the chest. As those vessels shift downwards, the superior laryngeal nerve can move out of the way and stay at the same level. However, the inferior nerves get trapped under the arteries and become stretched, creating the long recurrent nerves we find in the adult. This process mirrors the events of our evolutionary history. In early vertebrates, the larynx and the heart were found at the same level, but if our ancestors moved onto land and necks began appearing, these structures moved further and further apart, stretching the laryngeal nerves that passed between them. Nowadays we find this recurrent nerve in all land-based vertebrates. Notably, the longer the neck, the longer the nerve. So in humans, the recurrent nerve fibres can be up to a metre in length, 
but in a giraffe, the fibre can be almost 5 metres long. Damage to the laryngeal nerve can affect the patient's voice. For example, damage to the superior laryngeal nerve and loss of critothyroid on the injured side will limit changes in pitch and the ability to make explosive sounds, often making the voice sound more monotone. However, damage to a recurrent or inferior laryngeal nerve will disrupt the other intrinsic muscles, leaving the patient with a hoarse voice. The recurrent laryngeals are sometimes compressed by tumours in the lung. However, because of the asymmetrical nature of these nerves, the tumours that affect them will be found in different locations. For instance, the right recurrent nerve is found high in the chest, so it tends to be compressed by apical tumours in the top of the lung. Meanwhile, the left recurrent branch continues down to around the level of the hilum, that central region of the lung. At this level, apical tumours shouldn't have an impact, but hyla tumours definitely could. So, that's the torse and the relations of the laryngeal nerves. Whilst I can't speak for every exam board, the recurrent laryngeals are generally pretty popular with question writers, so I'd make sure you learn their functions and those differences between the two sides of the body. If you have any other questions or problems, please just get in touch. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.